much energy. Upstairs at her home above the Bondi Clinic, Ali is playing with a much improved Jupiter. The three-week-old kitten was dumped and left to die. When he came in, he was just so lethargic and could barely even lift his little head. Now he's so unbelievably affectionate. He just purrs non-stop. He's so playful. Every single new person or toy he finds, he just wants to play non-stop. <laughs> I'm definitely falling for him. I don't know how easy it'll be to give him up when it comes time for adoption. I'd love to keep him. I don't think it's very hard to see that Ali's become incredibly attached to Jupiter. <laughs> If you had to ask me whether Jupiter might become a, a permanent resident here, I'd say it, it's not so much a chance, it's more of a formality. Hello. Hi, how you going? Must be Melissa. Yes. This is Tyson. Tyson. Oh, Tyson. <laughs> I was warned that he was cute. He's cute. <laughs> Melissa is fostering three month old oh, rescue man. dog Tyson. Oh, right, come on through. But hasn't decided yet whether she's going to keep him. Hey, little buddy. He looks reasonably lively, but he just does look a little bit skinny. What's that? Oh, is that the spot, is it? <laughs> so, um, Sinazo is obviously just a temporary thing. <laughs> you two aren't bonding at all? No, not at all, no. No, he's beautiful, and the kids love him too. You look a bit worried. Has anyone mentioned anything to you about his his heart? No. So his, his heart isn't doing a normal lubbed up, lubbed up like that. It's actually, it's whooshing. And if you put your fingers here, you feel that? Like a little vibration? Little vibrate, yeah, yeah. So my gut feeling going on how Tyson's heart sounds and feels is a patent ductus arteriosus, a PDA. We've got a little cutie in here, mate. Barry the baby wombat. He's a little orphan. He, he came from Scone. His mother was hit by a car. Something about wombats. Cuteness just exudes out of their big fat heads and their short stumpy legs. Essentially, Barry has a drinking problem. Yeah. This is quite possibly the best part of your day, isn't it, Barry? Look at you. Could be the best part of my day as well. He drinks too quickly and then he's just knackered and needs to sleep it off. His milk. He's just got to learn that no one's going to take his bottle away. Meanwhile, Lollipop's owner Clarissa has arrived to reclaim her runaway. I just adopted her. She'd been abandoned by every single owner that she had because okay. she just keeps running. So no one wanted to keep her. Yeah. I just fell in love with her straight away. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> If I was to do nothing for little Pino right now, this tumour would continue to grow and would kill her. I'm willing to give it a go if, if you're willing to let me. Yeah, sure, yeah. What is one person's vermin is the absolute centre of this little girl's universe. And really, if they make an appointment, then we'll see them. Around here, it's all creatures, great and very small. Nearby, emergency vet Lisa Chimes is also worried about her puppy. Today is Lucas's big day. My little boy is getting castrated. And for most dogs, this is a fairly routine procedure. But for Lucas, he's got a rare condition called cryptorchidism, which basically means that his testes are missing. They haven't dropped down. <laughs> now, if we don't go in there and find them, he's got a 10 times greater chance of developing cancer. And that's pretty scary. It's quite pathetic because I lose all sense of being a vet. I've become a neurotic mother and I've been worrying all night about him having the surgery today. Walk. Wanna go walkies? For them to be in pain or go through any risky procedures just freaks me out. Come on. I thought you were gonna be hard boiled, didn't you? First four. Two months later at the reptile park and Flo's babies are starting to hatch. But will the new arrivals end up as feisty as their infamous mum? They're little miniature flows. A lot of attitude, a lot of get up and go. Uh, <laughs> how's he feel? <laughs> He's gotcha. <laughs> it's, it's okay, it's gonna be fine. And even a nice little bite just to remind me of the fact that they're flows babies. You know what? 
want you to have to have surgery. You're only a baby. An hour later and still no action. The question now is whether the kitten is going to listen to Lisa or cause herself a whole lot of pain. It's the easy way out. It's much easier than going under the knife. Hi, little man. Oh, he's beautiful. Come on, really? There's a zipper somewhere. There's like batteries in here, right? You're delicious, huh? So let's do a couple really specific ocular test yep. right now. I think the thing I'm hoping for is that we find some trauma and that we can fix this eye. The other possibility is that he was born with something very wrong with the eye and that we won't be able to save it. I can't see a pupil response and I see no squint with the, with the light. It's not looking good as far as being able to save it. He's not uh, reacting in any way that would indicate that there's any possibility of vision in this eye. Oh, sweet man. Oh. I think it would be... <laughs> the brave girl. Who killed the big snake? Who killed the big snake? I've got the shakes. <laughs> such a quick recovery, I don't think I've seen one quite like this. The Australian Reptile Park, two Tasmanian Devil sisters, are in quarantine. Keeper Liz is worried their illness may spread to the rest of the Devil colony. This is Lara. She wow, was the first just... one that we found and she just has shown no improvement whatsoever. She's totally unresponsive. Yeah. I get called out to the Reptile Park a lot but it's rare that I walk in and I'm so shocked to see just how sick these little guys are. <gasps> Who's there? Hey, thank you. Oh, hi, buddy. He'll probably sleep a lot tonight. Yeah, that's okay. We'll just sit around and watch him sleep. He's a gorgeous little thing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hopefully we won't have to see you back here, mister, and you're going to grow nice and big and strong. Natalie and Tess love Dougie so much. It's almost like when I brought him out there, they were just in this Dougie trance. They had no idea of what was going on around them. Oh, it's just heaven. It's just wonderful. Home just wasn't the same without him. Um, Chris, because you helped us. <laughs> really? I had to choose that name because that was all I could think of. <laughs> Christopher Rabbit. That's pretty cute. <laughs> Who's that? Hello. Come to get you, little Hello. Lady. Hello. You're coming home. It will take at least three weeks before Napoleon can finally get rid of that annoying scaffolding. Napoleon's really come out of this pretty well, considering, you know, if he'd have been bitten two centimetres further back in his head, he'd be dead. It's a tough decision for Cammie's young owner, Amanda. It's going to get worse unless she has yeah. surgery. And there's lots of risks and, and surgery might not fix her in the end, but that's the best chance the that best she's chance got. Yeah. I want the best for her. So I'm hoping that the surgery can do it and then take it from there. It's just a sad reality, unfortunately, Jen, when you have this many puppies inside, the womb, one of them ultimately ends up in a bad place where they just can't really grow and, and get all the nutrients. I think this is the one that's, that's been the case. It's very good to have Chris here. I'm not sure how I would have coped with that one. Right. So eventually enticed him out about 12 midday. Yeah. It's a big weekend for a little Very guy. big weekend, yeah. And the boys happened to be staying overnight, so they were there to help Grandma look after him, weren't you? Have you noticed he keeps on turning around and licking? So I'm just wondering if he might have some fleas. How about that? You're going to go home soon. This is one day after surgery and he's walking. The leg is fixed. Pip has made an amazing recovery after his leg was snapped in half. After just 24 hours, the toy poodle can now go home with his family. Your family's excited to see you. Yes, they are. Yes. Mommy's yes. coming. 
It was 11-year-old Rose who fell on her puppy. After blaming herself, seeing Pip again is a huge relief. You've got to be very gentle when you hold him. Wow. Hi. Can you see? Poor Rose missed Pip so much, and when I brought him into the room, the look on her face just priceless. And I know she is just going to look after him from now on. Playtime is over. Brian's now recruiting Chris to help sedate an African serval. Good shot. Well done. Well done, Box. That's pretty good. This feisty cat was born in captivity. Another success story for the Maholo Holo breeding program. So this circle's been hand raised, but she's now reached the age where she can really look after herself. So she's right to be released. Now she's getting a collar put on her, and that way we're going to know where she is. The key here is just getting the, the actual diameter of this collar right. The fit's got to be spot on. If it's too loose, then these guys will always find a way to, to flick it off over their head. And if it's too tight, it's just going to come into their neck. Hey, Doc, you could actually pick her up here. Turn her face that way. There you are. Well done. Well done. Put it inside. There's it. Close the door. Close the door. Hey, on the tail. Tail short enough. <laughs> they need to make it short. <laughs> the serval will be released later after she shakes off the sedation. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.